Brian Powell of Iron Far here with Ruby Muir after her second win at the Terraware Ultra Marathon. Congratulations, Ruby. Cheers. Um, you had quite the race yesterday. You went out strong and uh, must have felt pretty good that first half. Yeah, I had a I had a race plan yeah. and I stuck to it pretty well and it all worked out fine. Um, I just wasn't planning on Ruth <laughs> at the end there. So what was your race plan? In talking to, to some people today, you were it sounded like you were quite meticulous in preparing a plan for this race. Well, for me it's meticulous. I don't think for most people. I was just actually having a plan, ah. which is a good step forward. Um, I had gels for the first two legs until Okatina, mm -hmm. and from Okatina to 60k I was planning to go a bit slower and to get some solid food in because eating is one of the things I found hardest. And I managed to do that really well. I wasn't queasy and I got to eat quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I was planning to really hit the road section from 60k to the finish. So I was going to be back on some coffee gels and, you know, trying to be light and fast. And yeah, that all worked out. Yeah, because so. that middle section from Okatina to, to Terraware Outlets, the most technical yeah. part, and you're bouncing around a lot. And I haven't had a lot of, none of my training has been on technical trials at the moment, so I knew it wouldn't be my strength and I knew it would tire me out, so I thought I'll take it easier there and use that time to do some good eating. And, and then Ruth. Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, when did I, you start to know that she was close? I didn't get a lot of updated information. I sort of, in my mind, I thought that she might be coming. I, I don't think she'd done a race this long before, mm -hmm. so I thought either she's gonna blow up or she's gonna be really strong on those roads at the finish. But I got to 60K, at 11 hours 30 mm -hmm. which was five and a half hours which was well on like my ideal time was nine and a half hours all up so i got there and i thought i only need to average 10 kilometers an hour for the next 40 k's it's going to be you know i've easily got this mm -hmm. with a lot of road yeah, yeah. I, on the road i thought that would be quite good and i was really satisfied with that um and it wasn't until the loop of despair there's where you do the loop on the way back through I heard my splits and when I entered the loop she was only one minute behind me. So from 60k, that's over those 20 k, mm -hmm. 20 kilometers she put in a lot of time. I'm not sure how fast she was running but... She made quite the surge. Yeah. Right on your heels. Yeah. And then when you found out she was only a minute back. Well, I'd planned from there down to Fisherman's Bridges downhill. So I'd wanted to really hit that mm -hmm. quite hard. But I haven't been doing, I've just been doing road running so my quads were fried and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't easy. I I tried to, I sort of tell myself it's this free energy, you know. Mm -hmm. I was choosing between sort of hard work or pain, and I decided that you know I'd put up with the pain and try and run fast down the hills. But I think she's still she's still holding on to me then. And did you ever get an update of like when you broke her or did you ended you ended up winning by yeah a little margin. Um, I was a bit disorganized at the aid stations. Mm -hmm. Um. And so I entered Fisherman's Bridge 10Ks from the finish and took some time getting the right stuff because I was being really careful about getting all my nutrition and stuff right. And as I left the aid station, I heard someone cheering, whoa, Ruth, you know, and I, I said to Hoogie, who was pacing me, you know, was that Ruth? He's like, no, 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 it's a guy, it's a guy. And I was like, that was definitely Ruth. <laughs> and I was trying to sort out, like, put my iPod in to get me through those last 10Ks because I was in a really low space. And she actually, she ran right up and caught up to me. We were beside each other. I looked in her eye and I was like, oh no. You saw her, yes. 10K to go. Yes, we were in line, like toe to toe. And I was, you know, I, I was talking to Hoogie about, I don't know if I can do these last 10K, you know? And right at that point she caught me. And yeah, I think I went because I knew if she got ahead of me, I was so low that mm -hmm. You know, maybe I wouldn't finish strongly then, maybe I would have jogged it in, and then I would overall be disappointed, you know, I worked so hard to get to 90k to then... So I didn't believe I could hold her off, but I thought I'm going to surge again so that I'm still going strong, you know, to the finish. Yeah. And I put in Metallica and turned it up and just got out of sight, and I think that's when I had it. I thought she held on for me for about 2k's, 3k's, just behind me and finally I got out of sight and then I think maybe that she had a psychological yeah. effect which is sort of what I was planning because I didn't have a lot left. I still can't picture you listening to Metallica. <laughs> Actually I was, yeah, 
I was singing to Metallica. I was, I'd like digging deeper than I ever had. Like, I was horrible. I would have been, I hope there's no footage of that because I would have had the most horrible screw face. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Uh, yeah, a little bit different story than when you won in 2013. And yeah. And just ran your own race. Yeah, and, totally. And, uh, I've never really had to, I mean, I've been in races with a lot of people, but I've never had a race where I've really raced someone like that. So like, you've probably, what did you find out? You've probably gone deeper than you ever have. Yeah, into. definitely. And that's really satisfying because you've always got that question, but not quite enough to hang up my running shoes. I guess the thing I'd want to know is if she'd passed me and like if I still would have run strong for second or mm -hmm. if I would have given up and that's what I still need to find out. Um, sort of, because that's why you do these races to find out about yourself and mm -hmm. your mental strength. And so I certainly... I learned that I could push harder than I thought I could, for sure. Yeah. Do you think having the injuries and having to concentrate on road running for a period has made you a better runner? It definitely gave me the strength I needed for a race like this. Um, and I still had my technical trail skills, mm -hmm. but I didn't have the conditioning for it. So I really suffered because of that, like my muscles were ruined by the end of it you know by 90 k's and then I tried to run hard on 10 k's and like yeah it wasn't good but I think the road running was the best thing I could do for it and it gave me that strength yeah even though it hurt. so after the race I was driving back uh, from the finish and with Hoogie your yeah. pacer and he mentioned maybe a month ago you were out for a run with him in the mountains yeah and every time you went on a step you had to like go to the right side of the step swing your leg outside the step before you took the next step up. Yeah, that was my really the only trail run I tried and that's why I went back to road running again. I was like, there's just no hope. But on Thursday this week, yeah. I had an appointment to get an ultrasound and while doing the ultrasound, they injected a needle in my knee and pulled out all the fluid that had gathered from my injury. And I was pretty anxious about that. I was like, I've got a race in two days. Are you sure it's gonna be all right? And they're like, mm had a big discussion yeah yeah it'll be all right and yesterday uh the day before yesterday you know the day before the race yeah it was still really sore quite swollen and bruised but actually i got a lot more movement out of my knee from doing that um on the other hand i hadn't moved my knee like that for so long mm -hmm. and i found out part way through the race hey look i can go down the stairs forwards so i went down the stairs forwards and it meant that after 10 or 20 k's of doing that i you know those muscles were so not used to being used properly it, yeah, but you you can now run normally better. again. Not not a hundred percent, but definitely better. It helped. I'm not sure how much of it was the swelling and how much of it is the muscle I've lost, but yeah, I'm you know I'm actually seeing some improvements, so that's great. Does that make you want to reconsider? You know, just writing your plan to stick on the roads the rest of the year? Or does it? Well, a year's not that long. Um, I don't know. I think the thing that will make me reconsider is people sending me tempting offers, and I'll see how strong my resolve is, but. My partner, Christian, and our training, other training mates in Hawke's Bay are all targeting some road marathons that, you know. But I you're saying that if you got some good offers, you, you, you might consider some other trail options. I'm very easy to tempt. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm uh, trying to do the sensible thing, but I also like to have fun, so you need to find a balance somewhere. Yeah. Um, two years ago, you were, uh, you were running with Vibram, and, and with that, you were... Uh, you know, wearing Ultra Aspire, you sort of kitted out and sponsored, and yeah. over the last year, you're you're now an independent. Was that a, a conscious totally. choice? No, okay. I still get support from Dylan from Barefoot and Canning okay. Z, but it's just not it's not a very official support. And I've been injured for so long and not racing, and you know, I just have been buying the things that work for me. But I still had all his Ultra Aspire gear that he'd given yeah. me, which was really helpful. So has it been uh, useful sort of getting to play around with some different? Gear yeah, and totally. Um, I mean, I just had to. I yeah. Just you have to wear what works, and I'll wear whatever works. So what was that, that yesterday changes. on your feet? Um, that was some Ace uh, Adidas boosts. Yeah. With some, I needed some like medial support because on my good leg, I think it's been doing so much work. Its arches started rolling in, and so I was wearing some shoes with yeah. Some and they also had a big heel raise, which was good because actually. At about 85 k's, my calves, like the top of my soleus, were just ruined. And if I tried to do that in flat shoes, I'm not sure if I've got got the calves to do that anymore. So, 
you're willing to try new things and see what works. Yeah, totally. I, I do whatever works. I mean, I love the minimalist shoes. If I could wear them, I would, because I love being on the ground, mm -hmm. and I love that feeling. Maybe I'll recover and get back there, and maybe not, but... Um, now you have a range of uh, yeah. shoes in your arsenal. Sure. Nice. Um, so what is your next race? Do you, do you have something on the calendar that you're... There's nothing I'm entered in. Okay. Um, our, in my mind, it was Wellington Marathon, which is our capital marathon. It's not like the biggest marathon in the country, but it's one to have a go and see what my times are. And then a couple of months after that is Auckland Marathon, which is the New Zealand champ. Mm -hmm. Is that November? November, I think, or end of October. Okay. There's a whole month of like a bunch of marathons in yeah. New Zealand. Uh, yeah. So that was my idea. Have you run a road marathon No, before? I've never finished a road marathon. So Have you ever run a road race at all? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've done some halves and stuff. And I'm with, I'm in, uh, joined the local Harrier Club. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing some more of that side of running, which has been quite fun. Have you sort of thought about how fast you might be able to run in a marathon? I don't know. I have very unreasonable expectations. How when unreasonable? I, very unreasonable. <laughs> when I was a kid, I was very sure that there's no difference between like women and men and that mm -hmm. I should be able to do as well as them. And the reality is there is a big difference. And when you hit the roads and when you hit the faster times, there is an even bigger difference. So in my mind, my goal times are similar to like, say what my partners would be or, and I think, you know, 2.30 is a really good top, <laughs> but actually for me that's a bit unreasonable, which might also be why I haven't tried them, because I yeah. think it'd be a long years and years of trying to improve to get to a time that I'd actually be happy with. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations on uh, a great run yesterday and a uh, bunch of experimentation and new, uh, new pursuits. Yeah. Sweet.